we are working our way through basic assumptions that we need in order to understand international trade. And till now what we have done is we have made and worked through four assumptions. The first one being rationality and perfect knowledge. The second one being we are looking at a two by two by two world. The third assumption we have made is absence of money illusion. And the fourth assumption we have made is community indifference curves exist and are well defined. And using three and four, uh, we were able to determine consumer equilibrium. And now what we do is we move on to the production side. The fifth assumption is on the production side. And we, what we assume is each country has fixed endowments of factors of production and there is no technical progress. And when we say fixed endowments, it simply means we have a fixed number. And what kind of factors of production we are looking at? It is labor or workers, machines or capital, land and building, and the supply of entrepreneurs. We assume all these are fixed for a country. And we also assume there is no technical progress. In order to understand the fifth assumption, let us look at the following example. Suppose there is a country by the name of beautiful. So there's a beautiful country. And this country has a certain supply of factors of production, inputs or resources. And suppose this country has 50 workers. It could be 50 million, but let's assume it's 50. Five units of machine or capital. And then we have land and building. So country has a fixed amount of land. And let us assume there's one building. And we have two entrepreneurs. Using these resources, the firm can produce two goods, one called food, the other one called clothing. And we'll abbreviate food with the letter F and clothing with the letter C. And given this fixed supply of resources and the technology available to the country, what this country can do is produce a maximum of 5,000 units of food or clothing or any combination of food and clothing. The only limit is given the resources and the technology, the max amount it can produce will be 5,000 units. Given the resources this country has, which we have called beautiful, there are a number of choices available to this country in terms of production of food and clothing. Consider a production choice like A, when the country decides to devote all its resources to production of food, and given the supply of resources and the technology, the max amount of food this country can produce will be 5,000 and will produce no clothing. Remember, the max amount it can produce is 5,000. It could be clothing or food or both of them. Look at another production choice, B. Suppose this country decides to produce 1,000 units of clothing. In such a case, the max amount of food the country can produce will be 4,000. Look at another production choice. Let's call it C. The country decides to produce 2,000 units of clothing. In such a case, the max amount of food it can produce will be 3,000. And in this way, we create an exhaustive list of production choices available to this country given resources and technology. Now this table contains information about production choices or production possibilities. And hence this table is called the production possibilities schedule. Now based on the information that we have with respect to production possibilities schedule, we use that information and plot those points which reflect different production possibilities. And what we do is we have units of clothing as in thousands on the horizontal axis and 
units of food as in thousands on the vertical axis. Now look at a point like A. What does this represent? When this country devotes all its resources to food and nothing to clothing, what's the max amount of food it can produce? It will be 5,000 units. Suppose this country decides to produce 1,000 units of clothing. What is the max amount of food it can produce? You can go up like this and you find it is 4,000 units of food. And in this way, what we do is we plot these points and we join them. And what we get is a curve or a line. And this curve or a line represents production possibilities available to this country given resources and technology. And since it's a curve, we call this curve production possibilities curve. And since we'll use it again and again, we can abbreviate this as PPC. On the previous slide, we drew a production possibilities curve, or in short, PPC. And here is a formal definition of PPC, and that is, PPC is a collection of points representing different combinations of clothing and food a country can produce given its technology and resources. So this is the formal definition of PPC. Once again, the same diagram of PPC. And here what we look at are points of PPC and points on PPC. Suppose you are given a point like this one, which is to the right of PPC. And let's call this point G. Now, this point G requires 4,000 units of clothing to be produced and 4,000 units of food to be produced. Or in other words, a point like G represents 8,000 units of food and clothing. Can this country produce this given its resources and technology? Obviously not, because this point given its technology and resources is unattainable. Unattainable. <clears throat> not possible for this country. Consider a point to the left of PPC. Let's call this point H. And this requires 1,000 units of clothing to be produced and 1,000 units of food to be produced. Or the country, given its resources, is only producing 2,000 units of food and clothing. And hence, since you are producing less than what you possibly can, a point to the left of PPC will be considered inefficient. inefficient. <clears throat> so what do points on PPC represent, you are producing the max amount given your resources and technology. So all points on the PPC are efficient points or represent the max this country can produce given its resources. And once again, points to the right of PPC, a point like G is simply unattainable. A point to the left of PPC, a point like H, is inefficient. And all points on the PPC are considered to be efficient points. Now recall the definition of economics. And you'll remember that the major focus of economics is scarcity. When something is scarce, it becomes a part of a study of economics. And when we have scarcity, we'll always have a number of choices or options available to us. And when we have number of choices or options available to us, we are forced to decide. And when we are forced to decide, we can just have one, but not everything else. And when we do that, we incur a cost, and that cost is called opportunity cost. To give you an example, or maybe two examples. Time is a big time constraint for us, or it is a scarce resource. Now, suppose you look at this time period, suppose it's between 10 and 11 p.m. 
on any day and you decide to watch this video. Now the time period between 10 and 11 is fixed for you and you have a number of options available to you or number of choices available to you. You could watch this video and learn about production possibility curve or you could watch television or another possibility is you could talk to your friends. Now when you have number of options available to you, you will always be forced to decide and in your case you have decided to watch this video and when you decide to watch this video what you are doing is you are incurring a cost and that cost is called opportunity cost by economist. So when you decide to watch this video what you are giving up is either watching television or talking to your friends. So in order to watch the video you have to give up something and you have given up the pleasure of watching television or talking to your friends. Look at another example. All of us face a money constraint. Suppose I have $10,000 in my bank account, which I don't, but suppose I do. Now, with this $10,000, there are a number of options available to me. I could buy a new inexpensive car, or maybe I can travel to India and meet my family. If I decide to buy a new inexpensive car for $10,000, I cannot go to India. So what is the cost of owning a car for me? It will be the benefit of not going to India. And if I decide to go to India, what am I giving up? The pleasure of driving a new inexpensive car. And this is what we call opportunity cost. And all this arises because of scarcity. So we know opportunity cost arises because of scarcity and what it means in general terms is what you give up in order to gain something and that is called opportunity cost. In terms of our example, we have been looking at a beautiful country which produces both clothing and food and what will be the opportunity cost of clothing? Opportunity cost of clothing will be the amount of food you give up when you decide to have more clothing or more formally opportunity cost of clothing is the amount of food you would give up when you increase production of clothing by one unit and we can measure the opportunity cost in precise terms so opportunity cost of clothing will be change in production of food divided by change in production of clothing and this will give us the exact number associated with opportunity cost of clothing. Consider this table again. Suppose this country wants to move from a point like A to a point like B. What it is doing is it is increasing production of clothing and as it increases production of clothing it is giving up some amount of food. So when this country decides to increase production of clothing, it will incur a cost. And what will be that cost? The amount of food it has to give up when it decides to increase production of clothing by one unit. So when you go down this column, what you find is as you increase production of clothing, you are giving up production of food. And this will give us a sense of opportunity cost of food clothing. The same thing you can observe in terms of production possibilities curve. This curve is downward sloping that means as you could increase production of clothing production of food has to go down or there is a trade-off between these two and what amount of food you give up when you increase production of clothing by one unit is called opportunity cost of clothing. And so here I've introduced opportunity cost of clothing and in the subsequent video we'll actually calculate opportunity cost. Thank you for your time.